sing a love song to you, Lord. Every day, every night, tell of your goodness and mercy. Tell the world how you rescue me. Pick me up from sin and shame. Your breath leaves me in new life. Where can from your presence under your wings I take refuge your spirit lives within my heart I know I'll never be apart every day I talk closer to to see your face and hide in your embrace all my life dwelling in your holy place my heart oh lord you've changed never be the same never be the same Shalom and good morning to brothers, sisters in Christ. In John 14 verse 21 say, Whoever has my commands and keep them is the one who love me. The one who love me will be loved by my Father and I too will love them and show myself to them. Can you feel the love tonight everyone will say that is lion king but today can you feel the love of christ through this verse he keeps his promises so we do the same as we worship together this morning let us dwell into the heart of god 
in the matter of his love. Let us worship King Jesus. The greetings. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I was glad when they say unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the Almighty Saviour. God is spirit. We must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord now and forever. Amen. Amen.
to search and rescue in love the Father sends you broke through the darkest night you came to sing and save us you came to liberate us Jesus you heard our cry Jesus you heard This morning Bible reading is taken from the Old Testament from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 1 to 19 chapter 6 verse 1 these are the commands degrees and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess so that you your children and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you and so that you may enjoy long life hear O Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well 
with you, and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. This commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home. And when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands, and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses, and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land He swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac. And Jacob, to give you a land with large, flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then, when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord. Who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery? Fear the Lord your God. Serve Him only, and take your oaths in His name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the people around you, for the Lord your God, who is among you, is a jealous God, and His anger. Will burn against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the land. Do not test the Lord your God, as you did at Massa. Be sure to keep the commands of the Lord your God, and the stipulations and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so that it may go well. With you, and you may go in and take over the good land that the Lord promised and owed to your forefathers, trusting out all your enemies before you, as the Lord said. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is taken from John chapter twenty-one. Beginning to read at verse fifteen to verse twenty-five, glory to you, Lord Jesus. John chapter twenty-one, verse fifteen. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, "Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this?" "Yes, Lord," he said. "You know that I love you." Jesus said, "Feed my lambs." Again, Jesus asked, "Simon, son of John, do you love me?" He answered, "Yes, Lord. You know that I love you." Jesus said, "Take care of my sheep." The third time, he said to him, "Simon, son of John, do you love me?" Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, "Do you love me?" He said, "Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you." Jesus said, "Feed my sheep." Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, "Follow me." Peter turned and saw that the disciple 
whom Jesus loved, was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. As we come before the Lord through His Word this morning, shall we pray and ask God to speak to us? Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for this morning that you will speak to us. We humble ourselves before you, Lord, not just the hearers, but also your own servant, that Lord, Together, you will speak to us through your own word. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to continue to focus on the season of realignment. Now, as we wonder why we continue to focus, this morning I'd like to highlight to you the vision and purpose all right of the season of realignment which is a process of becoming like Jesus the question is how it begins by following Christ why why do, why must we become more like Christ why must we be following Christ well, it is to fulfill Jesus' kingdom purposes in Sindakan or wherever we are. The most important thing, we need to realize this. Having said that, we continue to look at the vision statement, which three weeks ago, our pastoral team has uh, unpackaged it again, even though we have done it uh, before, but we re unpack it to look at this vision statement. Now, in 2020, uh, 2019, in August 3031, if you still remember, we had a seminar called the Triple A Seminar with Pastor Hanson, and we met. A declaration to help us to recapture that. Let us watch this video. Now, having said that, we declare as archipus who are awakened, aligned and assigned brothers and sisters in Christ. This brings us back to God's creation plan. Why God created us? That we may know Him and make Him known. This we are very clear. Again, the question is how? How can we know God and make Him known? Well, it is a process. It started with our conversion 
right? Having been born again, and before we can fulfill the great commission, right? From conversion to commission, in the middle part is what I call our contemplation. It is a necessary process. The contemplation is the process, like being aligned with God. It is a process. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, it is important to also know the source of the process in the time of contemplation. It is the Bible and the Holy Spirit. The end purpose of the process is our lives being transformed form and making Christ known to people. So it is a lifelong process and this is the call of discipleship. The process begins with God who is love. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18b. For God is love. Now to become like Jesus we need to ignite ourselves to begin with God who is love. Hence, before I move on to the three points which I'm going to share with you, after this video clip, I want you to watch this video clip, Who is an Archippus? Let us watch it together. I am Archippus. I may be almost anonymous, but I'm fully known by name and I found grace in God's sight. I am fearfully and wonderfully made, created in His image, saved and called according to His purpose and grace. I am aware of the signs and urgency of the times. The days are evil and the time is short. I will not live as one who is apathetic, but will walk wisely and circumspectly, filled with the Spirit, knowing His Word, understanding the will of the Lord, making the most of every opportunity and participating in the advancement of His Kingdom. I will always determine to know my God-given Kingdom assignment in every season, that I may be faithful to fulfill it in my area of influence. I will discern between Christian activity and Kingdom assignment, appreciating that busyness does not necessarily mean fruitfulness. I will not be distracted by anything that will cause me to miss my assignment, that which has already been prepared for me beforehand. I am anything but aimless. I will be clear and focused on what the Lord has assigned to me. Each day is filled with purpose and adventure, journeying with and relying wholly on Jesus. For apart from Him, I will not be fruitful. Thus I shall run the race with certainty and resolve, with perseverance and endurance, looking to the prize I shall receive when I one day stand before my Lord and judge Jesus Christ. This is what it means to be an archivist, and I gladly join the ranks of others who, like me, desire to please my Master and to hear the words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Our readiness is determined by our faithfulness. We will gather to encourage, exhort, and edify one another. We will train and run together, spurring each other on, laying aside every weight and sin, eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I am Archippus. 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 Awaken, align, assign. Now, the first point that we want to focus on is ignite with God. Ignite with God. Now, everything we do, we may have the methods, we may have the materials. Both are important, but it must bring us to the Lord and His kingdom. Whatever we do, however we do it, which whatever means, 
we must bear this in mind, brothers and sisters in Christ, that it must draw us to the Lord and His kingdom purposes. Paul was writing this letter to the church in Colossae. Surely the Holy Spirit must have inspired Paul to give a word of encouragement to Archippus who could be possibly feeling a bit discouraged for whatever reason they may be. And so in Colossians 4, 17, you notice that Paul in one line addressing Archippus saying, see to it that you complete the ministry you have received from the Lord. Paul reminded Archippus that God has entrusted him a particular ministry which he is to accomplish. And Archippus need to be reminded again. And why? It is to encourage Archippus to totally committed to finish the task, the assignment God gave him. So the point here is this, that Archippus was called by the Lord for a particular ministry and Archippus is accountable to the Lord. With the Lord as our reference point, everything fall back to the Lord. Just like Paul reminded Archippus so that he will not forget but remember the Lord. All right? And faithfully carry out the ministry and the mission as God entrusted to him. How do we know that Archippus has faithfully finished his work? In Philemon verse 2, we see how Paul addressed Archippus as a fellow partner in the kingdom gospel ministry. Paul addressed Archippus as fellow soldier of the Lord. All right? Archippus, our fellow soldier, Philemon verse 2. Now, Archippus have been serving fervently and earnestly alongside with Philemon and a fire. He started with the Lord and now at Paul's encouragement, he consistently continued with the Lord. The point here is that the Lord called us to partner with Him to serve and to minister. It's to work alongside with God. This is about following the Lord obediently and faithfully like our keepers. What about us today? Have we ever measured our ministry as the Lord entrusted to us? Have we evaluated and see whether we have been faithful consistently like our keepers following the Lord and doing all that He has been entrusted? Well, for myself personally, even though having been ordained for more than 30 years now, I make a lot of mistakes along the way. Even with clear direction, good plans and programs, I confess to you, my brothers and sisters and friends, I failed in some of the ways. I failed to accomplish according to God's direction. And um, by God's grace, I was brought to this awareness, or in other words, being awakened, all right, being made awakened to the root problems I had. And the Lord led me to my own repentance. I have to come back to the Lord again and again. And God graciously forgives and God reignites. God gave another point, another chance to start again. So to look at God as a point of reference. Now, in the Bible, we also noted Joshua, for example. All right, in January, uh, first and second weeks, I share with you about Joshua. 
right? If you move on in the book of Joshua, in chapter 9, you will note that Joshua and the people of Israel made a mistake. In chapter 9, what happened? All right? They forgot to consult God when they were dealing with the Gibeonites. And without asking God, they, they signed a contract, they make a deal. And later on, they found out they were being deceived. All right? Henceforth, I think this is where we need to learn, even from Joshua and some of the leaders all right, in the Old Testament and New Testament, where we need to realign ourselves with God. The process begins with our relationship with God. We must be reminded that it is the Lord who calls us. It is the Lord who entrusted to us. It is the Lord who gave us the ministry. And we need to fall back again and again. Refer back to God to see how we are doing. Now, how do we do that? From the book of Deuteronomy, which was read to us earlier on. First is to love the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5. To love the only living and faithful God. In verses 4 and 10 of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Secondly, is to remember the Lord. You see, fall back to the Lord is to come back to God. Remember God. Right? Because the great and almighty God faithfully delivered us from the slavery of sin and death. Thirdly, is to fear the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13. To honor Him who first loved us. And this is the basis why we must ignite with God. So, second point is to ignite with God's love. The motivation, right? The command to love the Lord in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 is simply because God first loved us as read in 1 John chapter 4 verse 19. We love because He first loved us. We are commanded to love God. Remember last week, Reverend Ching Ka-jin shared with us uh, call, uh, calling Matthew chapter 22, 37 to 39. Here, we look at John in the epistle, clearly point out the reason why we love is because God first loved us. Then the question is this, how much God really loved us? Well, Paul in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 put it this way, to express the deep love of God for us, that God demonstrate His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now we need to capture this very clearly. We, we don't deserve to be loved by God. But the Bible clearly shows God loves us all sinners like me and you. Why is this so important? Why is it so important to know that God loves us first? Right? It's simply because when we fail to understand this particular point, it will lead to a lot of disappointments, discouragements, and misalignment. Right? Even in our relationship with God, in our involvement with His ministry, I'm no surprise. All right? Now I understand if we don't fully grasp this point, we will give up easily. 
right? If we don't know how much God loves us, and then we fail to grasp it, when we have problems, when we face challenges, the easiest way out is to give up. Nevertheless, why do we need to love God? Come back to that point. In any genuine relationship between a couple, is that love needs to be reciprocated. Right? God who first loved us expects us to love Him too. This is clearly pointed out by the risen Lord after His resurrection and how He spent some time with Peter and the disciples in John chapter 21, which was read already. Why do you think Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? There must be a reason, right? The whole purpose behind the questions is to realign Peter to love the Lord Jesus himself. For the simple reason Peter denied Christ three times earlier on in John chapter 18, verses 17, 25, and 27. This regard of how long we think we know the Lord, we all need to reflect how much do we really love the Lord personally. This is a point of reference when we want to work towards God's desire for us to become like Jesus. Jesus' life and ministry is an example of how he was motivated because of the Father's love, that he was so dedicated and committed to the Father's mission. All right? It is important for us to know this. If not, be reminded the warning both Jesus and Paul gave us in the scripture. In Matthew 24 verse 12, Jesus warned that the love for God and fellow mankind will grow cold. For Jesus said, Matthew 24 verse 12, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Similarly, Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 2 to 4, said this, People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, finally, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Well, the point here is this. God wants us to love Him too as He loved us. Yeah? The key to becoming like Jesus in everything we do must be done with God's love. Paul said in Colossians 1.13, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loved. Therefore, brothers and sisters, don't miss this starting point. Have a right relationship with God and his love. Now, the question is, is it possible today to love people like the way Jesus loved? Now, I'm not sure if you recall back in January 2021, I mentioned a particular incident about an American uh, whom by the name known as Todd White, an American evangelist with neck ministry, All right, they demonstrated the need today about sharing God's love with others. They taught whites, 
gone to the streets, not knowing the people in Jerusalem, all right? They just want to extend God's love with people whomever they can cross paths with. Take a look at this media the clip, this video clip whereby you will see that, you know, they mention this point. Immediately we hit on the street of Jerusalem looking for some people to love. Let's watch this clip. We arrived in Jerusalem and immediately hit the streets looking for people to love. The first person we met was this guy, who was walking with a pretty severe limp. Todd jumped right in. What is your name? Shay. My name is Todd. Good, man. Can I, uh, I know how to make your pain go away. Yeah? Yes, yeah, sit. Yes, yeah, sit. Right here. Just for a minute. Sit back the whole way. With your butt back. Uh -huh. Behind back. Yep. Feet. This, look, see this leg, it's long, this is short, you see, watch. Father, I thank you right now, in Jesus' name, left leg grow. You feel? You feel it coming out? <laughs> yeah, look. It's good. You feel in this leg? You feel the pain going away right now. Watch. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Every bit of pain, I command you get out right now. Get out. Discs be healed right now in Jesus' name. Stand up. Bend. Check. It's good. Come on. Gone. Gone. Let's check. Any pain? It's good. Gone? I am dreaming or what? No, you're not dreaming. Walk with me and tell me if it's gone. Come on. You know, I watched you walk. There's no pain. It's gone. Jesus just gave you new discs in your back. You had two discs that were bad and brand new discs right now. Because Jesus lives inside of me. So I pray and he touches you. Thank you, thank you. What is your, what, how do Shane, I say it? Shane, it's ish, it, uh, it's ish, a -H -I -N. That's amazing. Are you Muslim? Yes. 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 I'm Christian, and I just want to tell you that I love you. Oh, I want to meet you. All of my heart. Thank you, thank you very, very, very much. How do you say it? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Salam. Right, alaykum yes. Salam. Bless you. Okay. Enjoy your new back. Thank you very much. Thank Jesus you, Jesus' name. Thank you. thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Look, it's good. Thank you for your, for your time also. <laughs> Love you. Bless you, brother. See you. That's pretty amazing. Incredible, isn't it? You see how God's love can empower us to simply love. God's love doesn't depend on how good we are or how well we do. God simply loves. And that's what we need to do. We can learn from them. So first, ignite with God. Secondly, ignite with God's love. Finally, the third point, ignite with God's word. Now the goal of becoming like Jesus so that we can carry out God's commission, all right, by God's great commandment, all right? And how? through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, our vision statement. The Bible provides the principle and basis of execution where love and truth goes hand in hand. Love and truth must go together. Now, God's Word being the foundation of our trust, our relationship with God, and Jesus pointed this significance. In John chapter 14, verses 15 and 21. And this is what Jesus said. If you love me, keep my commandments. Whoever has my commands and keep them is the one who loves me. 
The one who loved me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is exactly uh, Todd White is trying to bring out. Todd White reflecting God's love by praying for people on the streets, strangers, complete strangers. And you notice that he prayed for Shaheen, a Muslim, yeah, on the street. Because, all right, uh, it may be strange, but disregard of what people look at or what people think about us, Todd White just prayed and God just moved like that. Isn't that wonderful? Brothers and sisters, all this, Todd White was doing in obedience to what Jesus has commanded. To love and to bring people back to God. Not looking at their background, what their religious uh, background is, their culture or their race. This regard of that. Brothers and sisters, the process of realignment with God is always God's initiative. Back to Peter's reinstatement. All right? That is a very good example. Peter denied Christ three times, but Jesus took the initiative, reaching out to Peter, draw him back to himself. So Jesus lovingly realigned Peter by reinstating Peter, as we have seen in John chapter 21, verses 15 to 17. Now, what is important is that God wants us to love Him and lovingly trust Him. That is what God is looking for. So that we can learn to grow and work out our salvation. Remember, we have to work out our salvation, continue. Not work for salvation, but work it out. Now that we have received Christ, we have God's love in us, and we have God let that come out so whatever we may be doing whatever service or ministry or evangelism or mission or intercession or charity it all must start with god and his love brothers and sisters jesus reinstated peter so that Peter may learn to love God and with God's love so that Peter will be able to feed the lamb to feed the sheep to care for the people many of us in some ways are like Peter I see myself I can identify myself in Peter I'm not sure about you but Honestly, like Peter, I have disappointed the Lord. I have disappointed people. Yet, nevertheless, God's grace is greater than Peter's denials. God's grace is greater than our problems, our shortcomings, our weaknesses. God's grace is greater than all that. And we have to see that there's nothing could hinder God from reconnecting us with Him and His love. Nothing can stop us from experiencing the love of God. Nothing can stop. Yeah? So we have heard Todd White's testimony. And Todd White was a drug addict before God touched and turning around to become an evangelist. His goal was to let God demonstrate the power of His love in a small and simple way. It is to bring people back into a right relationship with God with regards of who they are. So, being aligned with God consistently helps us to know how He wants us 
to carry out his mission, the assignment, the ministry he entrusted to us. All of us must bear this in mind. Whatever ministry or service, it must be a ministry of reconciliation. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 to 19. All right? Remember verse 17 is that all who are in Christ a new creation. And then how did this happen? He said, All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. God is realigning with himself through Christ. God is reconnecting us to himself through Christ. Not counting people's sins against them. As he has committed us to us the message of reconciliation. Well, I want to conclude with this short clip again. So that we can capture what Todd White said. Let's watch this. I want to be known as somebody that loves. Somebody that's passionate. It's about compassion. It's about the passionate heart of God for people. We got to stop trying to manipulate people, maneuver them into praying our prayer and start to just become love. Not pointing out the trash, but pulling out the goodness that people are. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation, not imputing the world's trespasses against them. Come on, but reconciling people back to the Father. That's the ministry that we have. If people can't see Christ in you, they don't want what you have, bro. God's incredible love empower us to simply love. God's love doesn't, doesn't depend on how good we are or how well we do. The ministry of reconciliation is simply to demonstrate God's love in the same manner He loved us all. This is the purpose of becoming like Jesus so that people can see Christ in us as we bring them back to the Father God. That is what we all need to continue to work on, our realignment process. You know, remember what Todd White said, if people cannot see Christ in us, they don't want to have what we have. It is about Christ, not about us, not what we have. That Christ's love will flow through. So in conclusion, People have different kind of needs, but we may not be able to meet all their needs. But we can demonstrate Christ's love so that people may encounter Him. How do we do that? It is to ignite with love where we need to ignite with God. We need to ignite with God's love and to ignite with God's word. Let us continue to pray and ask God to help us to process our own realignment. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for what you are doing in the whole world. So many amazing things, incredible things that you, you were doing through all your servants, through all your people who love you, who experience your love, and now they they're reaching out with your love that people can be reconnected with you. And Lord, we want to thank you. We pray that, Lord, for our brothers and sisters in Christ to be able to reflect and to see that not only thought why can be used by God, but all of us in the same manner, in the small thing that we can offer to do to help, to care for somebody who are pre-believing friends, family members to come back to you to know you so Father, thank you for helping us and ask Lord, you help us to realign ourselves back with you that we may become like Jesus for your glory and honor we pray in Jesus name, Amen
Oh yeah, I'm well liang liang this morning. Uh, I got announcement, a uh, church announcement. Ma. Okay, this morning we have few announcement, very important announcement. Firstly, the contribution for the phase 1B vision school project, secondary school block. Each of us can contribute 5 ringgit a week or 20 a month. Please use booth and online banking or envelope as shown here. Secondly, contribution for the provincial month, the month of February 2021. The purpose of this contribution is to expand the ministry of the province of Southeast Asia. The close date, February 28, 2021. Please prepare yourself to give cheerfully. Please use Boost or online banking or the envelope has shown here. Thirdly, ah, that's why today I'm Liang Liang because of this. I would like to announce to you the Chinese New Year online service on Friday 12 February 2021 at 8 morning. Let us invite all of your family members far and near to worship together. Please share the CNY online service link. Don't forget. See you there. Xin Nian Kuai Le. And probably as Wednesday and the Holy Communion online service on Wednesday 17 February 2021 at 8 p.m. There is a few important things. Please take note. Firstly, please get ashes and the Holy Communion element at the resource center from 8 to 11 of February from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Remember, 8 to 11 February. And for the head of the family, please get a video on how to impose the ashes from your cell group leaders or from WhatsApp viral. And the thirdly, we'd like to all of us to prepare our heart and our family in preparation for the fast and prayer for the 40 days. Finally, in John 14 verse 15 say, If you love me, keep my command. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us continue to be eager to read and meditate on the word of God so that we may know the command of God. God bless you all. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we bring before you Zambia, located south central part of Africa, a population of over 18 million. Copper mining and refining has been the major economic source. There are many challenges facing the country, such as corruption, health issues. We pray for the government to have wisdom to deal with them and also the hunger situation that affected some parts of the country. May the nation flourish as a Christian one which honours you, O Lord. For our nation, Malaysia, may your hand be upon the military observation troops along the borders between Southern Thailand and Malaysia at this time of movement control order and in a state of emergency. We pray for your intervention in the daily lives of the people in our country. We pray for those people in various places affected by the flood be given assistance. We continue to pray for all COVID-19 patients, those who survived to re fully recover. For all doctors, nurses, frontliners, and all who cared for the COVID patients, grant them your divine protection, O Lord. For the Diocese of Saba, we pray for Mangatal Anglican Church. We commit a Reverend Sabri Daniel, his family and church staff to you. Grant them health and divine protection. We also pray for the weekly online service, Sunday service, that they may be encouraged in their faith and daily walk with you. For our parish, Good Shepherd's Church, 
May your church be awakened at this time of MCO and to listen, to know what you are revealing to us. Help us to trust in you and to be obedient to do your will. We pray for all our members who participate in our online Sunday service. Help us to be truly worshipping you in spirit and in truth. We also pray for the, your divine protection on all teachers and students of Good Shepherd Kindergarten. We remember those who are sick. May your healing hand be upon them. All this we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Laws of God Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Lord, have mercy upon us and write these laws in our hearts, we beseech you. The Confession God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all men. Together we confess to our Lord, Merciful God, our Heavenly Father, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought, word, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, to our own deliberate fault. We repent and are truly sorry for our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The absolution. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you, and deliver you from all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you for his service by the power of the Holy Spirit and keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace. Now that we've been put right with God through faith in Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. So we must make peace with one another in the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet each other with the peace. We are now invite the head of the family to open the cover of your element. The thanksgiving. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is not only right, it is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and now we give you thanks because. Uh, in coming to dwell among us men, he revealed the radiance of his glory and brought us out of darkness into his own marvelous light. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Glory to you, O Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross 
for our redemption. He made there a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering once for all his one sacrifice of himself. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive these gifts of bread and wine according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in the remembrance of his death and suffering, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Blessed are those uh, who are invited to the feast of the Lamb. Let us rejoice and give glory to God. The gift of God for the people of God. Draw near with faith and humbly receive this bread and wine in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on Him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now the head of the family, please uh, serve the Holy Communion to, to those uh, who are already confirmed uh, in your household. Now we invite the head of the family to cover up the element. Lord's Prayer, 
Let us pray as our Savior taught us. O oh, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The blessings, the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.